So little owls, we are ready to get started on our geometric shape bats. The first thing we're going to do is get started on creating a background. And we're going to use the geometric shape of a circle to draw the full moon. I always have a really hard time drawing perfect circles, but I wanna show you an art teacher hack. You can grab anything like a bowl or a cup and you can trace it. If you trace the bottom half, it's gonna be a little smaller, but I think I want a really big full moon. So I can flip the glass upside down and place it anywhere on my page that I would like. Holding the top of the glass and then with my pencil tracing around it, I'm gonna go all the way around. You may have to move your hand. <clears throat> and just like that, I have the shape of the moon, a circle. To make this look more realistic, I'm going to use smaller circles and the letter C to put some of those craters in there. So there's a circle. I can do the medium, big, small, it's really up to me as an artist. I'm going to fill the moon here. They can be close together or far apart. You can even do a half circle sticking off the side there. That kind of looks like that letter C that we're going to do here in a minute. All right. Now that I have my circles, I'm going to put the letter C, just to show some of those other craters. They can also be big or small. We're going to come back to the moon here in a little bit. In fact, I think I'll outline this. As I was drawing, I was using a washable marker because we're going to make it look a little more realistic later on. Now I'm ready to draw some of my bats. You can put as many bats on your page as you would like, and you can use the worksheet with the faces to make your bats unique for you. To start my bat, I am going to start with a square, just like this. When I draw squares, I start with the vertical line, horizontal, vertical, horizontal, just like that. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to create ears for my bat. If you watched the video before this one, you'd probably learn that bats have really big ears so that way they can hear really well. When I draw my triangle here, I'm going to start close to the middle, but not quite. I'm gonna draw that vertical line up, and then I'm going to slant it down to the corner. Another geometric shape to make a part of my bat another vertical line, and a slant down. Two ears. I'm going to use another triangle to create the wings. This one's gonna end up sticking off the side of my page, but that's okay. So, I'm gonna find the middle of the square, I'm gonna slant up, and then slant back down. This one's sticking off. And then I'm going to do a horizontal line to finish the wing here. I'll do the same thing on the other side because bat's wings are a triangle shape. Now the fun part, I get to add one of those faces. <clears throat> this is how you can give your bat lots of personality. I think I want this one to be happy not gonna forget his little fangs, just like that. I'm going to put a couple more bats on my page here, speed up the video, and then we're ready to do the fun painting and coloring of this project. Now I'm ready to get coloring. But before I do, I'm gonna add a couple of stars. You can attempt drawing an actual star, and I have a trick for that. I'm gonna start like I would be writing the letter A. I'm gonna do a slant and a slant. And instead of making my A with a line across the middle here, I'm going to pretend that they're arms and they reach all the way across just like this. So that would be like my arms are sticking out to my sides. Now, this little shape wants to exercise, so I'm going to make this arm touch this leg, kind of like he's bending across his body and touching his other foot. And then I'll do the same thing. This arm, this arm needs to touch this foot, just like that. But if you're not quite ready to be drawing stars yet, 
I can keep it really simple and fill my page with circles. In fact, I kind of like that a little bit better. It reminds me of Vincent Van Gogh. I don't have to do a whole bunch, just enough to spread around my whole page here. And now I'm ready to color the background. I'm going to use crayons, but if you would like to use markers or colored pencils, it's really up to you. And I'm going to color the entire background, which is the space behind my objects, my bat, my moon, and my stars. And I'm going to do that all black. Or maybe even I'll add some purple. I think that'll look nice for a night sky. So I'll speed up the video because that's going to take me a good amount of time to get all of the background colored. Here we go. it up a little bit when I was coloring my bats and I did two with crayon and two with marker. So you can absolutely mix up your medias. You can also go in and color your stars yellow if you'd like to make those really pop. I think I kind of like the idea of them being white but it's really up to you as an artist. Our last step is going to be to create a moon that looks a little more realistic. So, that same glass that I had before, I went and filled it up with just a little bit of water. And I used a Crayola marker for my moon when I traced it instead of Sharpie. Because of that, it's washable. I can go in and paint on those lines. And it's going to spread the color just a little bit. You probably remember that from some of my earlier videos. You can use a Q-tip if you don't have a paintbrush. And I'm just going to spread some of that marker out make it look more like a moon. Just like that. You don't have to do all of them. You can do some. You can do a little. I can also trace the outside here or the contour, which I think I'll do on one side to make it really look kind of three-dimensional. You can spread the color out so it gets lighter. Really just have fun spreading that color out. It doesn't have to be perfect. All right, and just like that, boys and girls, we learned how to draw bats using simple geometric shapes. I can't wait to see what you create. Have fun, and I'll see you next time.